there was an attempt, it seems to me, for part of the IDW to get away from Dave Rubin because they realized that Dave Rubin was really embarrassing them. And Sam Harris really started to distance himself from Dave Rubin. And I think Eric Weinstein was also trying to distance himself from Dave Rubin, but then he got distanced from Sam Harris because of all the COVID stuff. And now, apparently, what the uh, plan is, is to uh, try and uh, get the IDW back together by putting them in these sensory deprivation <laughs> tanks and making them just stare at each other and talk. And uh, let's tune in to see yeah. how that's going. I also should note, they forgot to turn Dave Rubin's microphone on, so all the audio will be coming from Eric Weinstein's. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Well, I was looking at that. It looks like it's so far away from him. What is this? This is the Ruben report, and like, what's going on with Ruben? Like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. What's, well, all right, let's yeah. play it first, and then we'll talk about this because something's going on with Ruben. Like in exile, like, he's also looks like he's running for Congress now. Yeah. We had dinner last night. You're, you're, I would say, on it when it comes to the state of the world right now, and your concerns are the things that I think everyone is concerned about right now. I hate to do that. Really appreciate it. Don't know what to do exactly. You know, one of the things that came out of the discussion last night is that I don't think we are what uh, we think we are. Pause it for one second. Yeah. And obviously folks will know, like, this is not a function of our audio. They decided to do this in a cave and to record it with apparently like um, one hat, like the left side of a... Um, well, there's two microphones an there. An yeah. I don't even think they're using either microphone. It looks like it sounds like it's recorded off someone's computer. But uh, putting that aside, I love the incisive questions that Dave Rubin has. Uh, we had dinner and the world's messed up. Go. Yeah, it is like we had a great dinner last night and we talked, we had this amazing conversation. Can we give them a little bit of a glimpse of what we were yeah, talking about? Let's, 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 as if someone else we have tortured with having to sit with us at dinner. <laughs> us insufferable people. Exactly. You know, one of the things that came out of the discussion last night is that I don't think we are where we think we are. Mm. Um, I give the analogy that if you have a river that has always been flowing in one year, you have unseasonably cold temperatures, it freezes over. People think they can do what they've always done. They can dive off the rock into the river and if they're going to hit ice one year and they realize that you have to change your behavior when the, there's a phase change. I think that many of the recourses that we've thought about, free markets, free speech, um, democracy, uh, have to be rethought if they become gamed. And I think one of the things that we're, we're experiencing is we don't know whether to roll back to a previous version of ourselves, which would be like trying to find safe mode on a computer where the operating system has been become corrupted, or whether we need to go forward for things that aren't capitalism or communism, aren't democracy, because in fact, there's been a phase change in our world. And I think what we're doing is avoiding the question of you know, for example, if Hamas is a democratically elected government and it engages in pure terror, is democracy what we think it is? Um, does free speech operate the same way if you have armies of bots that can confuse people into thinking that uh, there's a mass of people who believe something, which there isn't on day one, but by virtue of the power of persuasion and social coercion, um, people are afraid to hold simple, decent pr perspectives because every time they do it, they're torn apart by what seems to be 10,000 uh, accounts telling them that they're an idiot, that they're cringeworthy, that they're over, that they're bar barbarous. And I, you I'll know, I watched this for happen. Now, obviously. <laughs> uh, uh, guess what? Uh, guess what uh, Eric's been getting on his social media lately? Yeah. But this is fascinating. I mean, I you can you can see where he's going here, folks. And there's a obviously whenever Eric Weinstein says anything, there's always a much easier, uh, less sort of like convoluted, less obscure way of saying it. And I'll say it in a moment. And I can say everything he's been saying in one sentence. Uh, but let's let him continue so that you can watch his this guy. Um, 
well, I'm not going to say that because that's inappropriate. But the, the, this guy really, really enjoys hearing him speak. And I say this as someone who obviously loves and enjoys hearing himself speak because that's what I do professionally. But this guy really loves it. I mean, this guy, like, there's, there's some strange stuff happening uh, back at the uh, Weinstein home when, when, you know, the day is over, the big mirror comes out, and some weird things happen, I'm quite convinced. <laughs> but go ahead. Every time they do it, they're torn apart by what seems to be 10,000 uh, accounts telling them that they're an idiot, that they're cringeworthy, that they're over, that they're bar barbarous. And I, you know, I watched this happen to you. You're one of the. You've seen my Twitter account, my dad. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? And I saw the, rep the, the repetition through what psychologists would call perseveration, where, um, you know, they would just hit you with the same phrases over and over again. And it causes people to move away from you because we, we have evolutionary program. So I think one of the things that I believe is. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, you know, if I think about the early work you and I did together, we were talking about fake news and what was coming. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty prophetic. So that, that stuff held oh, up pretty definitely. well. You're on yeah, the yeah. short list of people that uh, I would say that interviews actually do stand up and, and we're ballpark right back or, at or, you. Or, or let's say directionally right about where, where this was going to go. Sure. Fortunately, we're sort of in the prequel version of Star Wars now when Yoda says, <laughs> well, hell we have. That, that seems like in some respect. Well, and somebody tried to execute Order 66, and so the Jedi, uh, you oh know, put God. under a lot of pressure. But one of the things that I really appreciate oh is uh, the number of people who've had their relationships strained by the relentless attack we've all been under. Uh, you know, you used to be a liberal and a lefty. I'm still in that position. Um, and the fact is, is that we're still talking. We're still here, man. Well, and a large number of us uh, never stopped talking to each other. Some, some people have stopped talking to us. Well, I'll pause it for a second. Can you, can you speed this up so we can get to the part where they start to manually uh, pleasure each other? <laughs> where, where they were going, where, where Eric was going, and I don't know we, we, if it circles back, before they got on this sort of like, this sort of like uh, literally pity party uh, it's a pity party but then it quickly as it always does it's like it just vacillates between pity and self-congratulations like literally it's like it's like it's it's watching two cats sort of like lick each other clean on some level um, but Weinstein is basically saying we need to ask ourselves should we have some form of Caesar? Yes. That's where he's going, right? What he's saying, like, democracy is problematic. Free speech is problematic Free now. speech is problematic. Um, the free market is uh, problematic. Now, of course, the free market is never what Bud Light did. <laughs> and exactly. I mean, he's, he, he, what he's saying is, like, I, I don't like the idea that it's becoming clear the free market was always a fraud anyways. And my boss, Peter Thiel, can no longer manipulate things in the way, as in the darkness, in the way that he used to. Yeah. And, and so he's saying, that we need a Caesar? Now, I am sure it is just a coincidence that we have seen writing after writing coming now from the right and the Trump movement of, do we need a Caesar? <laughs> This is what's happening. Like, this is what's, uh, you know, whether it's the Heritage Foundation putting out their 2025 plan, whether it's literally um, intellectual conservatives who are writing pieces. Do we need a Caesar? And I will, I will also suggest this. There is a long tradition amongst Republicans of uh, being Straussians. Cheney at all, their, um, their whole theory about the unitary executive, that the powers of the presidency should be much more strong relative to the other branches of government. This is, this is out there. It, it just gets recycled in, in different ways. And Trump is just becomes like the more charismatic version of this. And so it makes it easy, but let's see where he's going with this. We skip ahead here, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. The mass killer, uh, shouted some, a religious slogan in a foreign language. No motive is known. It's time to end this once and for all. Uh, and what we're doing is we're, we're playing with ultimate fire. We have to worry 
about Russia, who in some sense we may have wronged, but they are still butchers and very, very dangerous. China has been playing the long game. I have the ultimate respect for how disciplined they've been, but we have to realize what they really present. India, Pakistan remains incredibly potent. Iran and Israel uh, are poised for something, and people have to realize you've never seen a hydrogen bomb used in anger. Um, the first time it happens will be like 9-11 uh, raised to the thousandth power. Um, this was an anomaly and we, we squandered the last bit of this. We were supposed to use the post-World War II peace to figure out how to stabilize this place. Mm -hmm. And we failed. We talked about peace dividends. We, we worried more about getting swimming pools and, and uh, luxury automobiles. Is that just the nature of, of human reality? You, you go through these hard times, you build good things, the good people become weak. And, and you know, you there's this up and fourth down. turning yeah. thing. Yeah. And the problem is uh, I have a different version of it, which is uh, hard times make strong men. Strong men make nuclear weapons in good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men and nuclear weapons make end times. And people have to stop this fourth turning. Oh, my God. Stuff. Okay, so just on the, again, we'll do this. He's, 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 he's explaining, yeah. he's explaining why um, he uh, finally convinced Peter Thiel to allow him into the bunker in New Zealand is basically what yeah. it is. This is where they take another run at this thesis that basically Dave Rubin wants permission to not be free speech anymore. Oh, is that what's going on? Yeah. I see. Because uh, all of the protests that are going on. Dave, Dave Rubin's really on a uh, journey. He is, yeah. Weak men and nuclear weapons make end times, and people have to stop this fourth turning nonsense. Okay, so just on the, again, we'll do this. From talk as fast as I can. You, you'll come to Miami, we'll do a proper one, or, or we'll do it on Skype in the meantime. But I just want to, I'm really yeah, trying to nail in down, I'm trying to nail down the, the speech component of this. Tell me. So when you tell me that the, okay, so the river to the sea is a genocidal chant. Yep. In no. Florida, DeSantis has passed laws. You know, we banned some of these uh, protests because he's talking about material And support. he makes us uncomfortable by banning speech. However, well, it's material support, but yes, people are arguing that it's these bannings. My speech. point is, is that he's recognized this is where I the phase transition. Right. So, so <laughs> how can we encourage that while being respectful of the ideas and, and ideals that we care about? How do we make sure that we have the proper tools, which is what he's done, to, to export to the rest of the country and maybe the world. It has to do with the fact that you need an interpretation of the world that allows you not to have a suicide pact. Democracy is not ah, a suicide pact. Free speech is not a suicide pact. We have pact. returned to September 12th, <laughs> yep. ladies and gentlemen. It's September December 12th all over again and just happens to arrive coincidentally as Israel is bombing Palestinians. Um... The class, this is what a classical liberal is, right? One who is talking about, we just need the tools to recognize that our society, they're so principled, these guys, right? Yeah. Like the, I, I almost miss the days when it was like all about principle. They literally, literally branded themselves as being outsiders, not allowed to have their discourse in the real web. They could only be in the dark web right. <laughs> and the, the pages of the New York Times. Those are the only two places that we're allowed to speak our truth because we have become so censorious. But then three or four years later, I realized like, well, I've now adjusted to see that the river has frozen. <laughs> and because the river has frozen, uh, we, it's okay. It's okay that we can just protect our speech. This is, I mean, this is why, like, you know, all of that, all of that stuff was always about, hey, wait a second, our speech isn't privileged anymore. Yep. We, we can't get away saying bomb all Muslims and then get a promotion based on that. No, you still can in a lot of, in a lot of spaces in this world and this country, but it's just fascinating. And it's also, um, they are so intoxicated by whatever is coming out of their mouths that they show no shame yeah. in how they have sort of like completely thrown and, and and really it just like i don't know that dave rubin in his mind or eric weinstein for that matter in their mind are like 
here's my plan and and here's how i'm going to stay relevant and try and position myself so that i can still have some relevance and by that make money or whatever it is but instinctively they flow like water going down a hill it's like a they're like a you know like they just find the path where they get the most sort of like um feedback that's helpful or attention or prestige or whatever it is that they think is there and they follow that path i mean they have uh, an ideology that of course is uh, right wing and is uh, you know i think uh uh fundamentally supremacist and um uh, but and well what's interesting with ruben here specifically is you saw it with the desantis thing which is that he is in bed with these politicians in a way that even eric isn't so he has to defend desantis's uh thing and so eric's like okay that's a phase transition we can suppress speech now but also bb netanyahu bb netanyahu's been on ruben report and so later in this clip i'm not sure if we and maybe a little bit after this um weinstein wants to critique bb and like the right wing of the Israeli government and Ruben's like well they've been doing a great job I don't know why you want to criticize them it's it's interesting all right let's get to that I don't want to spend too much more time on this but it's just but, interesting because and I'll, I'll tell you the point of this it's you know because I, I don't even know if Dave Rubin has a show anymore he's doing his, 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 his <laughs> doing it out of a closet which is also sort of funny uh insofar as like that may be uh a requirement for him to stay on the blaze if he's still on the blaze uh to do a show in this closet uh but um eric weinstein like the 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 only point of like talking about these people is to just sort of get a sense of of where some of these right-wing talking points are headed and neither one of these guys are as relevant as they used to be because they don't have uh the uh the the mouthpieces you know in the times like they had and uh, they've disassociated themselves from Sam Harris because of all the COVID stuff um, to some extent. They're trying to bring the band back together because they see the whole uh, war of civilizations that we had hopefully passed through uh, when, you know, uh, Barack Obama was no longer our uh, Muslim uh, socialist president. But uh, they're trying to bring it back. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to work, but it is uh, relevant to hear. Well, because they have to pretend like Tucker Carlson doesn't exist because of his isolationist position. Like, and Ruben did address that a little bit with uh, Andrew Clavin, and they are all like, maybe Tucker's not saying what we think he's saying, and maybe we all agree, but that's why they're doing this in the soundproof room, because they could just pretend like it's just campus activists. And stuff right, like of that. course. But, uh, the invasion of the beaches of Normandy, uh, to just go on social media and say, hey, we, oh, these huge troop build up. If that were happening today, we would have to restrict. So the idea is we need to let people in on how a mature society actually handled these things over time. It is the easiest way for people that are maybe not clear about all this to sure. see how for years guys like us were going to college campuses and being called Nazis and had to have security and been protested and microaggressions and all the rest of it. And then the second this thing happens with Israel, suddenly universities are defending your, the call to genocide. Like to me, that's like a very good example of how we can show people, boy, this was only about controlling you. Nothing. Well, look, but you know, there were also issues where people are confused because Israel has chosen to do things that are really uh, not comfortable and maybe not right. You know, no nation has ever only behaved ethically. Uh, Israel's not. I, I don't know that any Asian nation has behaved more ethically in, a, in this. Well, I'm not. I'm, well, but I, I get your metaphor. <laughs> and so my point is, is that there's two basic ways to do this. There's Pause the it. Concern. Okay, <laughs> they get to the one place that could possibly be interesting yes. and relevant to anything that's going on in the world, which is, is Israel acting ethically here? And Weinstein clearly has some questions about that good for him that means that he has like some semblance of like humanity that he can only deny with you know like a like a like a wind's kiss worth of uh, of pushback and he immediately like oh, okay we're not supposed to go there okay <laughs> And of course, Ruben is like, Ooh, we're on my show, so you've got to subscribe to my. Uh, I'm going to hear about this if you if you don't. 
<laughs> block right. that back a little bit. Right. Conservative way, which is you say something simple like, no nation has behaved more ethically given the difficult situation that Israel has always been in at an existential level. So that makes good sense to me. Then there's the liberal way of doing it, which is that you have a paragraph that goes on for, you know, uh, 12 pages with lots of footnotes uh, and pointers and references and hyperlinks. It's a slow delay of the bed. You have to read a lot. Right. Like, I'm, now I'm not saying this and I'm not saying that. So I'm in the camp. Which is exactly what they've right? been doing. And then the, the conservatives basically say, we don't have time for this. Here's the simple thing. It's not quite true, but it's true enough. It's like, it's not true that there are only two genders, but it's true enough. And so, you know, we're divided. I'm going to talk about, no, there's persistent Mullerian duck syndrome and you have to understand about developmental identities. Yeah. That divide, we've got to bridge it. Because Even with five hour podcasts, it starts getting, I understand. Yeah, you get the point. Well, you know, I, I, I look to my, my, my Muslim brothers and cousins, they just say PBUH. They don't say, you know, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate and merciful and Muhammad is only peace be upon them. They PBUH, mm -hmm. right? Like, let's get to the chase. Right. I think we have to stop. But we just. Yeah, because I didn't, uh, like, we were talking such nonsense, I can't even have, like, a clue as to what we've been talking about. And we might stumble upon something that actually has some type of relevance in terms of, like, the news today, which is, like... like assessing a nation-state's active bombing campaign. Right. <laughs> Or maybe we just talk about this crazy. But isn't stuff. it sort of like, uh, like in uh, in uh, Return of the Jedi? <laughs> Failed, we have. <laughs> <laughs>